Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are talking about the recent Cessna 172 Skyhawk Enhancement Pack provided by Just Flight. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay guys, first right out of the gate, little disclaimer, you must have the premium or the premium deluxe version in order to have this particular Cessna. But if you have the Cessna 172 Skyhawk with the steam gauges as you're seeing here, then you can purchase the package that is now available on Just Flight's website. And what it does is essentially enhances the cockpit as well as a few other things such as the autopilot um, and then some of the navigational radios as well. There's quite a few features that bring this cockpit to life. I'm not gonna go through every single detail that is offered with this particular package, but it is extremely reasonably priced a link to it will be down in the description below and uh, it definitely brings this Cessna 172 much more closer to what we would expect from real world performances so I'm going to go through a few of my favorite things that I've seen thus, thus far you guys know how big I am into customization so there's a couple of cool customization factors custom couple of a uh, cool um career factors, if you will, or personalization, things that will uh, make it feel more like your plane each time that you fly it. Uh, we're going to go through the steps on how to configure all of that. We're also going to talk about some of the uh, overall changes to the uh, uh, system on the back end behind the scenes that make it very, very interesting. And then we're going to talk about some of the engine fares and some of the maintenance uh, requirements that can be enabled through this new package. All right. So first up, let's talk about some of the factors that are, or some of the features that are just too cool for words for me. So first off, what I really enjoy is the fact that now all of the circuit breakers are completely functional and the faulting system will, you know, display should you <laughs> turn one off at the wrong time. For example, if we turn our avionics buses off, oh, apparently I'd not set a custom default view. So give me just a second here. I, that's rare of me. How odd. Okay, so here we go. So now if we try to do battery, and then we do avionics one and two, we get nada. And that is because we have pulled the associated circuit breakers. So I know that's something simple, but it adds up and you guys will see where this becomes even further beneficial and, and further cool, if you will, in just a moment, because there's a lot more to this than that. Okay, so one of the other things that's actually pretty cool is the lighting. The lighting has actually been customized to a point where if you run the battery for too long and you have your dome lights on, for example, if you were to turn all of your lights on, that we went crazy with the lights right there, didn't we? Taxi light, landing light, let's turn just those on. And then if we had our, there we go, cabin lights on, let's make it a little bit darker outside, okay? As the battery sits and sits and sits, you will actually, instead of seeing everything just go dead, like we're used to seeing in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll actually see the lights start to slowly dim and fade down, both on the avionics console and with your internal lighting system. So again, simple little things, but things that start to add up and things that can certainly draw attention to you over time. Um, I really am enjoying everything that's starting to come together with this. Now, let's talk about obviously the more cooler things that we, everyone's really interested in, and that is the fact that it can do uh, saving and uh, or condition saving as well as um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, maintenance, gosh, failures. So let's move on over here and check this guy out. So we're going to go to our ADF. All right, and first thing we're gonna do is obviously turn it on. Now, from here, you just have your standard default window, right? Just standard D, uh, ADF window. If you move your mouse over and click it, however, look what we get. We get engine wear, our fouling, if there's any fouling currently, you got your oil level, currently we're at zero quarts. You got your LCD color, okay? So if we click on, the, for example, the LCD color, let's do that, okay? You can change it to purple. Now, here's the cool part, is let's cycle through here a little bit. Okay, so let's just go back. These are the nav radio. So here's our engine failures. I'm gonna go ahead and turn mine on. 
and state saving, I wanna turn it on. So state saving and engine failures. Engine failures, you're gonna have things like wear and tear. Now this is an extended long time, so this is between 300 and 500 hours of use is when you'll start noticing some, some uh, engine failure, which is something that you can also monitor over here by the Hobbs meter, right? So that's first step. Second thing, engine failure can be anything from oil usage, okay? As the documentation for this application states, the Cessna 172 is an older aircraft and uh, it tends to go through quite a bit of oil. So if you don't monitor your oil, well, obviously you're going to have, it's going to burn oil. You're going to lose oil pressure if you don't monitor it. And obviously you guys know what happens if you completely run dry on oil, you're going to have a complete engine failure. Spark plug fouling, you know, running uh, too high a RPM at uh, too high of a mixture. Okay, so obviously you're gonna have to make sure that before a taxi, which is something that is going to absolutely get me, this is gonna stick me in the backside, is that we're actually gonna to have to make sure that we are paying attention to uh, the mixture on taxi. We're gonna to have to make sure that we're leaning the engine out to uh, performance. And that's something I'm terrible about on taxi. I'm great once I take off. When I, once, once we take off, I've gotten really good about monitoring my mixture and paying attention to that kind of stuff. But I just flat out don't when I'm on the ground. So that one's gonna get me. So here we can set our oil level quantity. You simply just give it a click. Now it's gonna cycle through a couple different stages. You're gonna have eight, obviously, green for good, orange for, hey, heads up, and then red, you guys all know what red means, you have a problem, okay? The LCD color, you can just cycle through that and notice it's changing on all of the uh, avionics that are associated with this particular, and we'll get down to this test here in a minute, uh, but let's put turn the uh, transponder on for a second, and you can cycle all of these colors. Okay, so kind of neat. Now there's also another catch to the purple, uh, but I have to remember how to do it. Uh, I thought I saw it. So here are your two nav radios. It's gonna be ADF radio two is selected here, and then ADF radio one is selected here. That's really important because of the fact that the ADF radio obviously still maintains its functionality. And now you actually have both one and two receivers available. So keep that in mind as well. Now, as far as changing the color, the reason why I was trying to get to and I kept forget and I got sidetracked was the LCD color went in purple. You can actually change um, the, um, I try to keep hitting that, the color to a custom color by entering the color code. Now, I haven't gone through that yet, but you can actually go through the documentation uh, that comes with the application and it walks you through how to do that. You would basically just type in uh, the correct code in the configuration and you can set it to just any color you want, but you have to be selected on purple first. Uh, let's see here. I don't think I'm missing anything else on the ADF. Now I'm just playing with things. Oh, fouling, okay, same thing with fouling, by the way. You're gonna see orange, yellow, red, obviously red being extremely bad. Same thing with your engine wear. Okay, but remember the engine wear, you're probably not gonna see that until you're like three, 500 hours of use. So this is where state saving comes into play. If you're gonna have engine wear, I highly recommend state saving because state saving is definitely gonna make sure that you, uh, you know, just sort of add further to that, it's your aircraft. After 200 hours of use and things like that, like that sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, if you're practicing a lot, maybe you're, you know, trying to get as realistic to the simulation as possible, you know, you might find yourself, you know, really watching that Hobbs counter climb up. And then you're going to start noticing as time goes on the different fouling and, and engine wear and oil quantities and things like that. So keep that in mind because that's going to be really cool. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the autopilot panel. There's a couple of different changes for the autopilot panel with this uh, new patch or this enhancement, if you will. Excuse me. And actually, one more thing I want to touch on with the spark plug fouling, too, that... Uh, makes enhances the situation a little bit more here and, and i was going to skip over this and then don i mean that's pretty important the other way to test for spark plug fouling in this particular with this enhancement is actually with the magneto test that you do during your run-up if you have spark plug fouling and you switch for example one of your magnetos off you know let's say we you know back down to you know only the left or right magneto um, you should, if you have spark plug fouling, you'll notice a significant drop in RPMs and, uh, you know, overall engine performance. So it's really kind of awesome. So you, you can either test it the, the real way it would be tested. Like, Oh, Hey, I, I've got a problem with my engine, right? Something's weird. Or you can just simply look on the ADF screen and you would be able to see it. So I did want to make sure that we pointed that out. Okay, so before we get into the autopilot, let's talk about the state saving for just a second. The state saving is really awesome. It has over 90 points of saving uh, items, if you will. Everything from the all of these switches to the lighting knobs, radio frequencies, um, if the engine was left running, circuit breakers, battery voltage, um, everything will be literally restored as if wherever you ended it on the last flight. 
So if I leave my engine running and I just jump out of the simulator, the next time I come back into the, my engine is going to be sitting there running away, right? So um, could be a con, could be a pro, depending on how you like to start. Now, that's really awesome when you think about it, because what you could do is also create the scenario of a hot start in the parking lot. So if that's something that you like, if you you know don't really want to deal with the engine start every single time, you want to just hop in your engine, but you still want to be able to taxi out to the runway, you know, that might be an easy way to do that too. Now we have the auto start, but just throwing out an example, or if you left your lights on or, you know, the beacon light on, whatever it may be. Uh, so that is pretty cool. Um, and then obviously whatever the engine status is and the aircraft status is overall, as far as its performance capabilities, performance degradation, those will also be saved as well. So pretty awesome stuff. Now I did want to talk real quick about the transponder because with the transponder, you can actually adjust the brightness. So while we are in TST or test mode, you can hit seven here and you will see that the numbers will increase or the brightness increases. You hit zero, the brightness decreases. Four, we'll send it back to the default. So again, a couple of just little neat features, nothing too crazy, but it does add something new to it. Now, here's the other cool thing about this is we can come over here and let's say we put in a transponder code of 3654, right? Okay. Now let's say for whatever reason we are, you know, we've stopped you know, altitude reporting or uh, stopped flight following and time to switch to VFR. Okay, we can just go VFR, switches, and this will set automatically to the VFR code of wherever country region you are in. So if your VFR code is 7,000, let's switch to 7,000, if it's 6,000, whatever. Um, and in our case, the United States is 1,200. But if for any reason you need to switch back to the previously assigned transponder code, you can just type hit VFR again, and it will return to the last entered code. So whatever code you entered previously, whenever that was typing or tapping VFR again, we'll switch it back to that. So again, pretty awesome, simple, but again, a feature that wasn't there before. Now, when it comes to the radios and the navigation radios, there's a ton of documentation that I highly suggest you guys read. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the features that came with the radio. There's actually quite a bunch of them. Um, so I do recommend that you guys look at the documentation in the installation directory for this uh, enhancement in the community folder. You will find a documentation folder that will have all of this information that I'm going through right now, as well as of a bunch more information, as well as key bindings and um, uh command variables that you can assign, you know, using things like spad.next or whatever it may be, um, if you want to further enhance that feature. Uh, so again, make sure that you absolutely read this, but I am, I do want to talk about some of the features that were brought into the autopilot. I know I keep saying that. So this time we're actually going to talk about it. All right. So first thing with the autopilot system that you're going to be, uh, uh seeing now is after the, uh, KAP 140, which is what this is now let's back, actually back up a little bit. So this, addition to the autopilot system is actually based on a mod uh, that was initially found on GitHub. Unfortunately, that mod was abandoned. So just flight being the badasses that they are picked up where that mod left off and tried to improve the uh, on the mod that was already built and enhancing our experience with this. So the first thing that we're going to be presented with is after the uh, KP 140 has gone through all of its testing phases, you're going to see the barometer um, flashing. Now, all this is, is a reminder, Hey, set your barometer before you use it. Okay. So I'm going to try to hit the B key. Cause I have no idea what it currently is. So two, nine or nine or seven. There we go. Okay. And we just type the barrel key to get it to stop flashing. Okay. So now we have some options as far as the overall use of the, uh, of the product. Okay. So now we're just going to go up, we're going to do a quick fly around, nothing too fancy. Um, you can see that I had to restart it because uh, <laughs> I let the batteries die. I walked away to get my dinner and paid the price for that. Okay, so we're going to play around with the autopilot a little bit. We are going to be doing VFR. And the cool part is since I enabled that state saving. Now, there we go. You know what? I think I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. So I can get to everything. Control, Alt, and 2. VFR. Let's come back up here. So the cool thing that I wish I had caught, and I guess I could always restart the engine, but the gyro effect is actually pretty cool. So when you first start it, you'll see your ADI shaking all about, you know, and same thing with your HSI and all the uh, gyro driven gauges sort of dialing themselves in as it balances out. It's pretty cool. Um, now, one of the other cool things that I really enjoyed, I do not remember this fuel shutoff valve actually working in the default system 172. Uh, the fuel shutoff valve is functioning, so I really actually dug on that. Um, 
But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get her rolling. We're going to go airborne for a second, play around with the autopilot a bit, show you guys a couple of really cool things. So I'm going to go ahead and get her up in the air, and we'll see each other in a second. All right, so we are going to be taking off with a bit of a tailwind. But I'm going to go ahead and sit us here for a second. That's all right. I just didn't feel like taxing all the way down to 2 9 right. I really didn't. So we're going to see here. Let's set this up to uh, 3,000 for now. We're just going to set that. We're not going to do anything else with it yet, because I want to show you guys some pretty cool stuff here. So. Let's get back up here. Now we're just going to power up, get rolling as usual. Airspeed alive. Looking for 55 knots. Probably going to go for 60 since we're not using the headwind. Give ourselves a little bit more. And rotating. Come on, baby. Try to get us into a decent climb here. I'm going to maintain max power for a minute. Just want to show you guys some cool stuff here. Get that, keep getting that trim rolled out. Come on. Watching that. Uh, trying to get our vertical speed stable at about a thousand feet per minute for a second preferably before we stall the aircraft all right so first step here let's see if I can get it when you engage the autopilot leaving altitude oh it helps when you hit it right the button so first thing it's do it helps when you hit the right one it's gonna go into roll mode which is the first thing it's going to do, as you can see here, is it leveled the wings. So if you are in a turn when you actually turn the autopilot on, it's going to level the wings. That's going to be the first you thing that it does. That is so cool. Now, let's set that actually a bit higher. I forgot our ground level was quite a bit higher. So let's go to like, I don't know, 6,500 there. Okay. So first thing that happens is let's turn the autopilot off again. I'm going to put myself in a climb above... 1,000 or above 700 feet per minute. I'm going to hit that turn again. Let's do autopilot. Now, if you are already in a positive rate, like we just were, okay, we were in a positive rate of climb. We were climbing at about 1,200 to 1,500 feet per minute, depending on how this dipstick behind the yoke here actually managed to hold it. When you turn the autopilot on, it's going to, as we discussed previously, it's going to level the wings, set your heading bug or, or heading to your uh, the closest heading right and it's also going to set your vertical speed to 700 feet per minute um, that is if you are in a positive rate of climb the limitations for the uh, rate of climb or rate of descent it's going to be negative 1500 feet per minute or positive 700 feet per minute now if we were climbing for example at 300 feet per minute then the aircraft would maintain that 300 feet per minute climb so for again let's disengage the autopilot and let's put our nose angle down yeah, right about there. Turn it back on. And you can see it locked us in here at 400 feet per minute. So kind of a neat feature, right? Now, if we are in level flight and engage the autopilot, okay, nothing's going to happen. Okay, we will have to, at that point, manually switch it over into vertical speed mode. And then using the up or down, we would have to select our descent rate. Okay, now we can set our arm altitude at this point and lock in the altitude that's desired. And we should now stop at about 6,500 feet. So all of these things are just a few of the many changes that were done to the autopilot system, to the overall cockpit system. I'm just trying to highlight the things that were most exciting to me. I love the changes to the transponder. I love the changes up here to the ADF, the customization options, the engine failures. Speaking of engine failures, we should probably pull some of those RPMs back, get that mixture dialed in. Um, so for example, <laughs> we have been running max power now for quite a few minutes at full mixture. And guess what I did not do before taxi? I told you guys I wasn't going to. I told you guys I was gonna forget. Let's see if there's any fouling. Boom, medium fouling already. Because yours truly, as I told you, did not lean the mixture out for taxi. Uh, so I probably fouled them up then. And uh, obviously we've been running full mixture now for a couple of minutes while in a uh, pretty steep climb and running at uh, max manifold pressure. So, you know, it's the way it goes. Um, we should probably actually add some of that power back in. 
or zero out our altitude, one or the other. What are we at right now? 5,000? Let's just bring that down. And since we are already past it. Trim in motion. Trim what? in motion. I didn't catch that one. I didn't catch what she said there. Vertical speed. Let's get that down. And I'm sure there's still plenty of things that I yet have to learn here. Yeah, we are right at the stall speed, man. So, anyways, long story short, guys, I really think this is a fantastic application, and I think it was a very easy way to uh, turn something that was already in the simulator into something quite a bit better. There's obviously a heck of a lot more I have to learn. I have to learn the navigation radios. I don't know them very well at all in this particular aircraft, being completely honest. But I'm very, very impressed with the features. <laughs> I'm very, very impressed with the features that have been brought to this aircraft. I think that they've really done an amazing job with it, and I really recommend that you guys pick this package up if you enjoy the Cessna 172 with the steam gauges. And again, please remember that it means that you are limited to either the premium or premium deluxe version. If you do not have this Cessna 172 in your hangar, don't bother purchasing because unfortunately it can't help you at the moment. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. hope it, you know, helped you make a couple decisions. Again, I can't stress enough. I have gone over probably about half of the changes that were actually included with this package. They were just the ones that stood out the most to me and that honestly I found to be most exciting. So as always guys, stay safe and healthy and I will see you in the next one.